Time for race two, 14 laps of the Reed Park Townsville Street Circuit. And in this one, we reverse the top 10 finishes from race one. Well, let's have a look at the circuit, just under three kilometres and two tracks in one, really, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's got a, a it's quite good. It's got a lot of a lot of everything, really. It's It's got some high-speed flowing sections and some really tight little bits. The run under the straight's really quite tight. Great passing opportunity there in turn 11. And part of the circuit goes through Reed Park, so it's kind of like Albert Park in Melbourne, where turns two, three and the like are down on the, the regular streets and roads. So it's two tracks in one. Nick Perkat starts from pole in the Rockstar Commodore. Let's have a look at the way they line up. Scott McLaughlin, who goes for his road licence this week, starts on the outside of the front row. Blanchard and Baird, Morris and Russell. Ben McCashney, really good job from the young Victorian. Just missed out on the inversion to go into pole position. But a really big field. It's great to see so many cars here this weekend. Wayne Moles has been busy on a tour of North Queensland. Marcus Sukanovic has switched to the sequential gearbox for this weekend. Marcus Marshall, Jeff Emery, Luke Yildon repaired and ready to run. And Aaron McGill equals the series record of 39 starts in rounds of the Fuji 2 Series this weekend. Race two, let's get it going. Can McLaughlin get it off the front row? He's had a few chances this year. The young 17-year-old has Perkett been left the on there. the grid this time again. And Perkett sort of had a bit of a, a wall there on the start, so uh, the stewards will probably have a look at that. Down at turn one, Taz Douglas second. Look at Craig Baird. The Jacks, quick fit tyres, Commodore squeezing across. Drew Russell is not going to take a backward seat to the oh. former Carrera Cup champ, and everyone was very slow there. Everyone took it very cautiously there. Moffat's pushing a bit harder around the outside there. It's, it's going to be pretty tricky pulling him up into here, especially me. There it is, right there. That's what I was talking about. Oh, Morris got it on oh. the back of James Moffat, and oh. it's three wide for a second here. It just looks messy, doesn't it? Hang on here, this could be tight. The fast guys are trying to work their way through. Russell's second, he's away and running. Oh, Morris again having a look at Moffat. Yeah, that was gonna, that was gonna end in tears. Here oh, he comes. lunges. Big the lunge Did he, he make, make it, it through? Where's the love? Oh, there's a bit of love in the grass there. Love in the grass. Oh, smoke from the front left as well, and Moffat's slowing, so contact between Morris and Moffat. I don't know how he damaged that front left there, because he would have touched him on the right. Oh, Marcus Marshall in problems as well in Matthew White Motorsport car. Serious damage to the left front down at the chicane. There's Morris making the big lunge, but I want to see what's going on here. Ryan Hansen with a big lock up. Oh, Rodney Jane just tags the back of Phil Foster. Oh. Yeah, that's a bit, that's quite heavy damage to the front of Marshall's car there. Let's get another look from on board with Jane and 67. Maybe you owed him one from last year. That is Morris's car from last year. Yeah, it is. And it was in this corner that Morris put Jane into the fencing qualifying. So I guess that's 15 all, but it doesn't help Phil Foster. Here's another angle. And Marcus Marshall just wrong place, wrong time in the background. But Morris was more over the grass than the curb. That curb on the inside there is very aggressive. So he's probably just hit it way too hard and it's uh, damaged the front. There's a lot, of, a lot of damage there. The dude limping back to the pits. Nick Perkat, David Russell up front. This is an awesome bit of the circuit here. Nice fast flowing section. Oh, Marshall hasn't made it around turn 10 and here come the leaders. Oh, he yeah. runs off. It's time to get behind the fence, Eminem. <laughs> Oh, the yellow flags around. Looks like the safety car is going to be out in a second. Plenty of damage, plenty of stranded cars. What a way to start. Race two, round four. Morris in the pits there with Jack Perkins. The love Commodore is out of love. We'll take a break. More from Townsville in a sec. Back in Townsville, restart in race two of the Fujitsu V8 Supercars. Nick Perkat is the race leader. David Russell second. Tim Blanchard next, but Taz Douglas is making a move towards the front oh, as Craig Baird makes a move on him. Yeah, great move there. He's got a lot of experience. Owen followed him through, and uh, looks like Scott's trying to get a, bit, a few ideas off him too. Scott McLaughlin in the Fujitsu Falcon, just in behind Drew Russell. Then it's Todd Fiore in the Triple F Commodore. The run through turn three brings them back into the Reed Park section oh, of the circuit. Oh, oh. scary in there. McLaughlin, the 17-year-old, makes a big lunge. Oh. Oh. That was close. That was cheeky. That was, that was good. Oh, Reynolds has been a bit of grass action in the back there. McLaughlin, as I mentioned earlier, is going for his road license this week. He's 17 years of age, Drew Russell behind. They've overhauled the shocks on this car since Winston. Look at Blanchard making a big, big lunge. And Owen on Bird in the background. But Russell is back up the inside. He's on the wrong side for the last corner. He may be able to give it another switch back, depending on our uh, experience. Oh, it's close. 
So Blanchard yeah. is through to second. That's David Russell on board. The Jaco Falcon. And that's going to affect how this car performs in this race. Well, they have a pretty good drive off that bottom corner there, but it's not going to be too happy on the brake here. So uh doesn't look like he's too worried about it. Back with Rodney Jane. That's Colin Cedars who's picked up the support of a range 14 local Townsville businesses. But it's not helping because Rodney's around the outside. It's a pretty brave move around the outside there, Mr. Jane. He's done well. Looking back at Cedars, first start of the season for Colin. Hasn't raced since October last year, but here are our leaders. Perkat leading the way, Blanchard, who's recently finished his accounting degree. He can focus now on the business of becoming a V8 supercar star. Russell third, but under the gun from Owen. These are the two uh, guys who are expected to do really well this season, and uh, you know, Owen's shown him the way so far, so there's a bit of heat on him here to uh, you know, show him what he can do. The Earthx Commodore is the fastest on the track, and he's down the inside. It's makes a good move. Yeah, he did that really quite easily. Russell is struggling with that rear roll bar, so uh, we'll let him off this time. New backing for him this weekend from Nando's, the chicken restaurant. He might have to deal out some Perry Perry or some lemon and herb here on Owen. As, oh, Reynolds squeezed by Tony Bates, and Bates making his first start of the year gets unloaded. Yeah, look, he didn't give him any room there. He could have uh, made it a little bit easier for them. They both could have got through there, so uh, interesting. Regular driver of that car, Jeff Emery, stepped into the second of the Greg Murphy Racing Run VE Commodores. Here's Drew Russell, McLaughlin, Fiore, just behind, working his way through from the back of the grid. David Reynolds started in 21st, his first start of the season. Of course, drove full-time for the Bundy Red team last year. Drew Russell doing a great job. Very small family-run team. He's Here battling he a flu this weekend, but Reynolds is coming for them all. Yeah, look, he's you know, got, clearly got plenty more speed than those boys through there, and, and uh, Yildon's coming back through as well, so it's, it's going to be pretty interesting towards the end of this one. Great chance for some of these young drivers in their first year of Fujitsu oh, wrong racing. side, Scott. Wrong side, buddy. Switch back. He'll learn. Oh. But it's a great chance for some of these young guys with not much experience to see how full-timers and former Championship Series drivers do it. Yeah, look, they can, uh, they'll can. they probably see how, you know, how they go about their racing a bit different with racecraft. Like, once... Uh, Reynolds gets past Scott here, he'll, be able to, he'll watch where he's quicker than uh, Russell and, and make the move straight away. If you stay behind them, you're going to get caught behind them. So the idea is as soon as you catch them, pass them. Luke Gilden here trying to come back from two starting moves. on the back row of the grid. McLaughlin, two deep, no way. So it's a little bit of uh, experience there showed with Reynolds. He sort of held back. You can see that he'd gone in too deep. He's going to take them both wide and took them both. And McLaughlin will lose another spot to Gilden. This was a deal put together very, very late in the piece for Luke to drive this car that won the championship last year. And look at this, just in behind there, the, 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 the white green car, that's Aaron Russell, the younger brother of Drew Russell, and he is really coming to grips with this V8 supercar thing as the Canavic makes a lunge. It's a really tough corner to get out of this one. The car's really heavily loaded. As you're getting out, you can hear it struggling for traction. Here in feathering the throttle through there, it is quite high speed. Rodney Jane closing in on Ben McCashney, but it's our leader, Nick Perkat, who has been caught by Blanchard and Owen. Owen's uh, caught them pretty quickly here, and uh, he's got plenty of laps to get past them. Remember, Perkat second oh. in the championship. He goes to block, oh, too late. Might have a shoot here. Blanchard gets through, Perkat tries to fight in the J Motorsport Commodore. Great man to pass here. He's putting the nose back inside oh. the two Formula Ford champions. Oh, oh getting stuck into it. Blanchard could have been in the fence. That was horrendous. Oh. Oh, still on. Oh, look at these guys. And Owen's taken the advantage, got the lead while they fought amongst themselves. And the experience came to play there. That was hairy. That was hairy, dudes. No one ended up in the fence then. Now, you'd expect Owen to be able to drive away. Let's have a look again on a replay. This is Todd Fiore. Oh, down the, oh, 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 Luke Gilden dings the side of Drew Russell and sends the Zamana Falcon in the wrong direction. Uh, no, it's, it's hard to say here, but it is really Gilden's fault because he does pull right out of the way to get, try and get the switch back. This was close. Look at how close Blanchard is. This is scary. Look at this. Oh. Look how sideways he is. Damn. I think that's what he was saying too. Steve Owens through the lead, race two.
back in Townsville with race two in the Fujitsu V8 Supercar Series. And there's lots going on. We're right on board with Rodney Jane. And that's a slowing Todd Fiore and Jeff Emery. There's a lot of stickers on the dash there. That would annoy me looking at my dad that much and then I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> Emery wide, the front bumper of that car damaged. He's not having a good weekend, the former Commodore Cup champ. This looks a bit messy through here, doesn't it? Still Bri going on. Brian Hansford looking to make a move on Fiori as well, who's been sharing that car with brother Paul throughout the course of the year. Back with Rodney Jane, the former Craig Lowndes Vodafone Falcon. And that's Colin Cedars picking up a spot from the wounded Earth X Commodore. Yeah, he's just purely circulating now. Having a look at Aaron oh, Russell. Oh, and Rodney really Jane. tagged him there. That was really close. And Aaron's doing a great job. Down on track time, missed practice one with fuel pump issues, and they had clutch slip in that car in race one and limped it to the line, so they've changed the clutch for this race. These boys are still hard at it. They're not giving up. That's where the action was last time. So you've got the young guns, Perkat, Blanchard, Russell, and the old stage of Berto. Berto might uh, show these young, young whippersnappers a, a thing or two here. He's been doing this for a long time, Craig Baird. He'll be with Walkinshaw Racing for the big endurance events. I'm not sure yet whether he'll be in a HRT or a Bundy car, but this is Emery. And he doesn't know that that spoiler is damaged until he's off the road. He certainly knows about it now. One of the fastest parts of the circuit and you're out in the grass. And look at this, Steve Owen's got away, so the fight for second. This is a grudge match, this is a bond sport. They are getting stuck into it so far, the young guns. Perkat, desperately trying to raise the budget for the rest of the season, has really impressed this year, has barely put a mark on this Commodore. Look, it's going to be hard for these guys, you get a bit of heat soak being in the, so close to the cars in front of you. It's a street circuit, it's very hard on the brakes. So it, it's going to get swirly under brakes for these guys, so to pass now is, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty tricky. I can't get over what happened back a couple of laps ago, that was amazing. And Blanchard's not done with yet. Some reports this week that he may make his Championship Series debut at Phillip Island with Greg Murphy filling in for the absent Ivan Muller, the French World Touring Car star, looking to be unavailable for that race. Rodney Jane in pit lane, that is a penalty for that contact earlier on that we saw, so not a good weekend for the Bob Jane team, Arts Falcon, but it's a great weekend if you're in this fight. And not too far away, Taz Douglas is sticking with them for a guy who's been so sick, he's done one test day and he's got his eye back in and he's on the money. There he is in the white Commodore in the background. That's just an amazing job considering what he's been through. It's, uh, you know, hat goes off to him, he's credit. There's Owen getting away. Last left, last left. And that's the word being given to the drivers. This race has been shortened by one lap, so it's now a 13 lapper, it's now or never. You see a bit of experience there from Craig Baird pulling out, trying to get a bit of cool air to his brakes so he could have a bit of a lunch. Percat with a little bit of a margin. Blanchard a little bit sideways in the exit of turn two. All the drivers would be aware of now that it's the last lap, so... Uh, oh, 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 oh. Percat with a lock-up. That's going to be easy to do. Stressful situation. Last lap, second place. A lot of heat from behind. And he's got one less lap to hang on with. This is a great part of the track where they flick left and right. Hard braking zone coming up here at the 4X Gold Chicane. Look, as long as he can get out of this next little chicane, good drive, he's got a gap, he'll be fine. Steve Owen at turn 10, he's managed to sneak away as he's done so many times in 2010. But the fight for the Miners has been a real highlight. Blanchard knocked the rear slightly there, but uh, managed to get away with it. The last turn is his last opportunity. But Steve Owen bringing it to the line. He started from 10th, he's got his way to the front. And it's two from two for the EarthX Commodore for Greg Murphy Racing. Perkat with lights ablaze. Good job, Nick. Good job. Hangs on for second. And what a drive. David Reynolds from the back of the field gets to seventh. It's amazing. It's great effort. We saw him charging through. Good bit of experience there. Luke Yildon just in behind there in eight from McLaughlin. Marcus Sukanovic, that's a good fight too. He started 22nd and ends up in 10th place. Aaron Russell, another consistent run. Problems for Tony Bates, Rodney Jane, and Wayne Miles rounded out the top 20. Steve Owen, win number five. That's a 50-50 win rate for you so far this year. Where do you need to start from to make it a challenge? <laughs> well, we'll see come the Enduros, you know, it's a completely different level there. So, um, but this is good practice, and the times we're doing this weekend are fairly competitive in the main series. So that's the main thing for me.
keep pushing, not just for this race, but for you know the, the bigger races with Jamie. So that's a, that's priority this weekend.